Sheffield Trinity will need no firing up for this game. They love a game against their neighbours Leeds and they'll be looking also to complete a league double. Remember they won by 22 points to 14 at Headingley right at the beginning of the season and Wakefield of course including three men who were on the Leeds books previously in Andy Mason, Mark Conway and Keith Rain. The Leeds team still harbouring hopes of winning the First Division Championship and they too will need little in the way of motivation for this match this afternoon. Wakefield Trinity also have on debut Australian Paul Taylor, signed from Parramatta, played in four grand finals around the 30-ish mark and bags of experience behind him. So let's take a look at the Trinity lineup and coach David Toplitz switches Richard Slater to fullback. The three quarters, Phil Eden, James Lulawai, Andy Mason and Andy Wilson. The halfbacks, Paul Taylor, we've already mentioned, and of course Mark Conway kicked 93 goals and scored six tries this season, Conway, and he will need absolutely no spur to impress against Leeds. The Wakefield front row, John Glancy, John Thompson, who takes the hooking role in the absence of the suspended Billy Conway, and Nigel Bell is at 10. In the second row, Andy Kelly, thankfully recovered from those studs he sustained on his Achilles tendon last week at St Helens, although, of course, he is uh, still stitched at the back of the leg. Tracy Lazenby moves into the second row. Ray Price, another man recovering from injury and thankfully fit and able to take his place in the lineup. And there's a real blast from the past on the Trinity bench, going all the way back to that 79 Challenge Cup final. Andy Fletcher at 14, and another former Leeds man, Keith Rain, at 15. The Leeds lineup. Well, coach David Ward has done a lot of shuffling with his team. He brings in Phil Ford at fullback for his first full game since January the 17th. Moves Gary Schofield to his test position of centre. So the three quarters, John Bentley, Gary Schofield, Carl Gibson and Vince Fawcett. Dave Hurran, perhaps the most significant change, is back at standoff half. And he's partnered there by Paul Delaney, who replaces Crookshank. The front row, a debut for Paul Worthy. Colin Maskill, an ex-Trinity man at nine. Paul Dixon at ten. The Australian Cavill Hugh at eleven. Mike Kuwiti is twelve. And Gary Devorty, last man down. Rob Ackerman and the versatile Gary Lord are the lead substitutes. The game already underway, that first whistle of the afternoon from witness base referee David Campbell. And the first penalty awarded almost immediately by referee Campbell leads caught in an offside position. And that perhaps a mark of exactly how Leeds are approaching this game. And they'll be extremely heartened by the fact that Wigan, the league leaders, were beaten at home yesterday by Widnes. And this, of course, will give Leeds fresh hope in their quest for that first division championship. So the first penalty taken and Trinity gaining the first psychological advantage by making ground into the late half of the field. John Thompson leads, by the way, you'll notice in their change strip today, the all-white strip, one which I find especially attractive. And an early run there for John Glancy. The first tackle of the match for Paul Worthy, the Leeds prop. James Lulawai into the line. And Lulawai was looking to find a way through, and Paul Delaney was on him like a flash. Lovely bit sleight of hand there by Ray Price. And a first look at Paul Taylor. Comes with the almost mandatory Australian suntan. Vastly experienced player, Ray Price knows him well from their days together at Parramatta. And that ball thrown rather loosely back into space and Slater knocking on. And immediately spotted by the referee. And Gary Devorty were in any event up very quickly. So the handover and a first taste for Leeds of possession. Worthy is going to take it this one on at first man. Big strong lad Worthy. Leeds have been very impressed with him in the A team of late. And that's why he's earned a call up to the first team squad. Speaking to the coaches before the game, I was inquiring why David Young wasn't uh, in the lineup. And I was told he's not quite ready. And that ball put to ground by Cavill Hugh. Wakefield back in possession. Mark Conway. And as one would expect, the early tackling very keen, very crisp. Paul Taylor, John Thompson. Good tackle that by Cavill Hugh, right round the ankles. Both sides lacking at least one man injured. Roy Powell out of the Leeds pack and Gary Price, of course, out of the Wakefield lineup with hamstring problems. Paul Taylor looking to break down the middle, and again the Leeds tackling has to be quick and has to be firm. And again, Paul Worthy is there. Andy Kelly. Kelly on the break and he's past the first man, past the second man. Nigel Bell, Bell takes the ball on. 
Shows great pace for a prop forward, Nigel Bell. And this is the last tackle, the applause ringing round Bellevue. The little kick forward. The ball's back with Wakefield. They'll have six more tackles. They're only five yards out. Wakefield looking to draw first blood. Tracy Lazenby. What a good versatile player Lazenby is. We've seen him operating in various positions this season and today in the second row. Good pass from Conway and Thompson's in. That's a great pass from Billy Conway. And Johnny Thompson in for the first try of the match. And there's barely three minutes on the clock. So Wakefield making the ideal start. It didn't do them any harm at all when they regained possession just five yards out. When the ball came to Mark Conway, John Thompson was running onto the pass with perfect precision. And Thompson it was who crossed for his fourth try of the season. Four points to nil. So what an ideal start this has been for Wakefield Trinity. Leeds who had a rest of course last week while Wakefield were losing at St Helens. But the previous week turned in what was generally recognised as a well below par display at Warrington. Even then they could have won the match but for a couple of indiscretions in the dying moments of the game. Mark Conway. And he's kicked it. Six points to nil the scoreline. And those are vital early points for Wakefield. That's number 94 of the season for Mark Conway. And he'll be all the more pleased that it's come against his former club. So leads to restart again with uh, international centre, Gary Schofield, skippering the side, of course, nowadays. The ball long and deep, and Kelly fumbles, but no knock-on, says referee Campbell. And Andy Wilson gets a run from his own line. Doesn't make the 25. Tracy Lazenby making good progress, but Trinity still haven't made the 25. Glancy. Nice to see John Glancy back in action. Been absent for a long period this season with that wrist injury. Mark Conway will kick. Cavill Hugh can't get across quick enough, and that's an early tester for Phil Ford. And the Welshman, a Great Britain international, is equal to it. Good catch by Phil Ford. Ford concedes a penalty. I don't think there's ever been a question mark against Phil Ford's ability. One wonders sometimes about his temperament and that not the ideal position to concede a penalty in or indeed at this stage of the game. Leeds have had precious little possession as it is and they could uh, well done have holding, been holding on there for at least the mandatory six tackles. So Conway attempting to increase Trinity's lead a little further. 35 yards out, as you can see from the field markings. The pitch, by the way, in absolutely superb condition here at Bellevue today. And the weather, it's a cold March afternoon for this last Sunday in March. There's still a bit of wind about, and there were some hailstones about a couple of hours ago. Let's hope there are none to come during the match. it again and no wonder Mark Conway has increased Trinity's lead after just six minutes and it's now eight points to nil still waiting for the ball to be returned and this just perhaps the worst possible start Leeds could have made to the game eight points to nil down six minutes gone Andy Wilson tumbling over the 25 Wilson as he's half tackled Nigel Bell running from acting half back a slippery customer Bell Kuwaiti leads the Leeds tacklers this time it's Kuwaiti and Devotee doing the tackling Conway across the line 
Lazen Bay, Lulawai. And Carl Gibson up on him very, very quickly. Good work by Gibson. John Glancy. And Gibson again. Again, good tackling work by Carl Gibson. Paul Taylor. And that's a good kick from Taylor, except it's in on the full. It looked as, just for a moment as though it might hold up. So the first view we've had of Paul Taylor as a tactical kicker. And I'm afraid it's not to Trinity's advantage, that first kick of his. The way the wind's blowing, I might have expected that one to hold up, but it didn't. So leads to restart with the handover. Paul Worthy. His father was a professional player, played, of course, with Keithley. Came through the Colts at Leeds and fully deserving of this opportunity in the first team. Paul Dixon. Sporting a heavy growth of beard today, Dixon. Colin Maskill to Worthy. Colin Maskill, another who will want to do well, began his career here at Bellevue. Was well loved by the Trinity crowd during his spell here before moving to Leeds. Devotee brings Ford into the line. Ford held on the 25. Good tackle by Glancy. Paul Delaney. Heron. Cavill Hugh puts the ball down. Wakefield are back in possession. Again, some dodgy handling by Leeds. And again, they're back under pressure. Andy Kelly. A half tackle from Devotee. And plenty of assistance on hand for him. Thompson. Nigel Bell. Again, a good tackle by Paul Worthy. Conway to kick. The wall's charged down. Bounces just right for Richard Slater. Slater keeping the ball moving. Lazenby inside to Mason. Mason, no chance to get running there. Kuwiti nabbed him straight away. And he receives admirable assistance from Gibson and from Paul Dixon. Thompson. Taylor puts the ball down. He took his eye off that one, Paul Taylor. I think he was ready to distribute before he'd actually collected. It's going to take him a little while, of course, to get used to his new colleagues here at Wakefield, to the style of play and, indeed, to the conditions. Ten years with Parramatta, four grand finals and plenty of experience behind him, the standoff half. David Heron. Heron been operating in the second row since he came back from his suspension. And now back at standoff half and obviously enjoying the work. Devotee. Cavill Hugh. Trying to unload, but he was very well wrapped up indeed. John Thompson was upstairs. And Mark Conway was downstairs. Wakefield standing very tight on Leeds in these early stages. And the visitors really not able to get the ball moving across the line. Schofield the kick. Richard Slater the catcher. Schofield upon him quickly. Andy Kelly on the burst again. Kelly was one of the players I was speaking to before the game. And he said to me, we need little in the way of motivation to play against Leeds. Wakefield, of course, need the points to stay in the top eight. And they've got a lot of the contenders still to play. They've got Wigan next week, then they go to Salford, and then they wind up over Easter with two games against Bradford Northern. So still plenty to play for for Wakefield, and they'll definitely want to hold on to a place in the top eight. Lulawai held just short of the halfway line. Taylor the kick, that's more like it from Taylor. Sends Ford racing across to his right. Ford slips. And the cheers of irony come, of course, from the Wakefield section of the fans. Kuwiti. Looks to make progress up the middle, the Kiwi, and held short of the 25. Cavill Hugh. Cavill Hugh breaking away. Just couldn't get the pass in, does this time. Delaney. Delaney still going. Vince Fawcett. Two of Leeds' star-class youngsters. Fawcett working his way inside. Just couldn't find the space. Good work by Mark Conway. 
David Herron. Paul Dixon. Wanted to unload Dixon, Trinity wouldn't let him do so. A three-man tackle block there, led by John Glancy. Colin Maskell. Maskell's dropped the ball. Wakefield are back in possession, Glancy. Gibson standing up very tight on Mason. There's going to be no quarter given in this match, and I suspect none asked for. Phil Eden. And Eden's found the gap down the middle. Eden on the burst. Ford's across. Doesn't really make the tackle full forward, and Eden had to be all down by... A combination there of uh, David Heron and Gary Devotee, Andy Mason. Leeds looking a little bit out of sorts in these early stages. And Wakefield making them pay. Eight points to nil. To Kelly and Kelly onto the 25. Gary Schofield comes across to have a word with the referee. And in any event, he's given the Wakefield the penalty. Schofield still prepared to argue. Not the wisest thing to do. Another ten yards is given. And really, Schofield ought to know better. Still having a chunter. And there's barely 15 minutes on the clock as Mark Conway... With his uh, third attempt of the match so far, he's kicked two of them. Mark Conway then. Two out of two so far. That one just drifting past that far upright. So Leeds survive. But still trail by eight points to nil and 15 minutes gone on the clock. Schofield to drop out. Gives the ball plenty of air. Andy Kelly. Kelly completely foxes Fawcett and still going Kelly. Delaney and Devotee grab him with the assistance from the third man Paul Dixon. I think the Trinity fans are enjoying this so far. Workfield, of course, opened their league season in fine style with a 22-14 win at Headingley. And two more points today would be very welcome. Paul Taylor. Tries to jink his way through Taylor. There really wasn't that kind of room for him. Maskill, I think, was just waiting for him to turn inside. Mark Conway. The last tackle, Paul Taylor. And up and under from Taylor, in fact it's over the crossbar, it's over the dead ball line and it's well away. A little bit too long from Taylor. Not too sure how much football he's had of, uh, of late, uh, Paul Taylor, but he will certainly have been getting himself ready for the Australian season. And then of course found himself surplus to requirements at Parramatta. Devault is the runner. Kelly's the tackler, and the penalty is awarded to Leeds. Ray Price being spoken to. Well, there's plenty of input from the crowd at this match. We've already heard uh, the Wakefield section voicing their opinion, and one or two of the Leeds section now with plenty of advice from Mr Campbell. At the end of the day, it will still be a penalty to Leeds. John Bentley over the halfway line and pushed back. Good firm work by Wakefield. Devotee. In fact, it's worthy, my mistake. Held by Price. Devotee this time. Devotee breaking through and still going, gets the ball inside to Schofield. Back to Dixon and Dixon's, if he can release the pass and Delaney will score, or somebody will. The try's been given, it remains to be seen.
Pull back both forward, or scrum half Paul Delaney who grabbed it. But whatever, Leeds are back in the game. We may have to well wait to see how that one sorts itself out. I thought Delaney was first man there. Phil Ford jumped to his feet and punched the air, so Ford may well claim the try. In fact, the try given to Paul Delaney. But if there's to be any doubt about that, we will, of course, clear it up for you a little bit later. Good move from Leeds once Devotee had established the break down the middle. The ball went on to Schofield, to Dixon. And although the ball went loose, Leeds had the first two men in the chase for the touchdown. Colin Maskell. in the league this season hits the post and goes in well they all count in off the post and Leeds after being under a great deal of pressure for the first 17 minutes of the game suddenly find themselves right back in there with a shout at eight points to six Conway then to restart for Wakefield. Straight to Schofield, and a good clean collect. Schofield, of course, one of the players who was on international duty down in Perpignan last Sunday with the Great Britain side that beat the French. Paul Worthy. Not frightened to take the ball up. Big, strong lad. Cavill Hugh slips there as he came into that tackle by Ray Price. David Heron. Paul Dixon. Harden goes to acting halfback. Delaney. Cavill Hugh. In fact, it's Kuwiti. These two numbered the other way around to your programme. Devotee, the kick through, and it's a kick through. It deceives for Leiden. And that takes play up some 20 or 30 yards from where the kick came. And referee Campbell upsetting the Wakefield section of the crowd by indicating that the ball touched Eden on its way out. So Leeds will have the foot in and, of course, the head. Darren took the ball well and moved it well too. Carl Gibson, Gibson heading away up that far side of the field. Conway's after him and Conway grabs him. Schofield this time to acting half-back. The short ball from Schofield to Bentley. And Bentley not failing to break the tackle. Good work by Andy Mason. David Heron, inside to Schofield, a short pass. The centre still going. Leeds inside the Wakefield 25. They're beginning to put one or two moves together now, Leeds. Delaney. Cavill Hugh. David Heron looks for the runner across the line. Dixon took the pass above his head. Well tackled by Andy Mason. Paul Taylor is in there as well. The last tackle. Will Leeds look to reduce the deficit? Well, I thought they might attempt to drop. Instead, Schofield puts the ball high in the air and beautifully taken by Conway. Well judged by Mark Conway. John Glancy. Devotee leads the tacklers. Nigel Bell. Been a lively start to this game. Halfway through the first half. Eight points to six to Wakefield. Well, a knock-on from Nigel Bell. And the frustration shows itself there as he throws the ball to the ground in anger. They're very annoyed with himself there, Bell. Wakefield in possession inside their own half of the field. And almost certain, unless John Thompson can work a miracle against Colin Maskell in the scrum, Leeds will be back in possession. Devotee to Delaney to Bentley. Breaking through, turning the ball inside. Kuwiti held some 10 yards out and Wakefield now a little bit stretched to the back there just for a moment. David Heron, Gary Schofield, Paul Dixon, Dixon stepping inside his man, gets the ball away to Worthy and Worthy held just a couple of yards short. Gary Schofield, David Heron puts the pass down, it's back with Schofield, it must have touched a Wakefield man, there's something on here, Schofield to Bentley and Bentley's in at the corner. 
And for the first time in the match, Leeds are in front. Well, it rather looks as though Schofield's intended up and under, caught somebody on its way up, and when the ball came down, it was back in the hands of Schofield's in a flash, and Schofield made the space out to the right to send his winger Bentley in at the corner. Ten points to eight is the scoreline, and there are 22 minutes gone. Well, Leeds were beginning to put uh, something together there. And they came out of their opponents 25 with the full reward, four points. Difficult kick this for Colin Masker. In front of the north stand. Maskell steadying himself. Doesn't look as though it'll reach that one. And in fact it falls just short and bounces off the underside of the crossbar. Perhaps it was a little nearer than we thought originally. But uh, that leaves the score line at Wakefield Trinity 8, leads 10. And uh, Paul Taylor's English debut has lasted some 22 minutes. He's now gone off the field to be replaced by Andy Fletcher. They tell me he's been in cracking form for the A-team Fletcher. He will go on the right wing and Phil Eden will very likely move to standoff half. There is, a, of course, a possibility that Lulawai could move there with Eden moving into the centre. We'll wait to see exactly what happens with the Trinity lineup. Worthy's lost the ball. Wakefield back in possession. John Thompson, scorer of that Wakefield try. Conway. Conway still going. Lovely run from Conway. The pass wasn't ideal, but Phil Eden's now got the ball and looking to make progress on that far side. Nigel Bell. Inside the 25. Takes some stopping. Kawiti. And Worthy between them to, to hold him. Mark Conway to Dulawai. Slips a lovely little pass there to the Kiwi. John Thompson. Lays him with the drop. Looks good. In fact, it is good. Is it signalled? It is. Yeah, I thought that one looked good. The referee looked very hesitant. I had an, uh, half an eye on him. Normally, the referee will signal the drop goal, of course, by taking his handkerchief out. Mr Campbell obviously didn't have a wipe handy but did signal the drop by raising his uh, left arm. So 15 minutes from half-time, Wakefield Trinity 9, Leeds 10. No shortage of points so far in the first period. First touch for Fletcher. Great favourite of the Bellevue crowd, Andy Fletcher. Goes back a long way here at Wakefield. Nice to see him back in first team action. Phil Eden. Nigel Bell. Stopped by Hugh. Wakefield still pinned back in their own half of the field. A little bit of early sparkles just gone. Thompson battling hard there, was looking to get the pass away. And Leeds deny him the opportunity. It's a good catch by Bentley, and he sets Ford away on this side of the field. Ford straightening up. Goes off his left foot forward, still going. And eventually nabbed by Phil Eden. One of the fastest men in the game is Ford. Didn't play the ball correctly. Delaney comes away with it. The Wakefield fans are unhappy. Devoti juggling. This is a good break. Paul Dixon looks around for support. Still going Dixon. Finally nabbed by Nigel Bell. Good recovery tackle by Bell. Delaney to Heron. Heron wriggling away from Glancy's tackle, but Glancy recovers to nab him. Get it! 
Kawiti. Good tackling again by Wakefield. This time Luluai was the man right round the ankles. Schofield looked as though he was going to kick. Instead unloaded to Delaney. And that'll be the handover because that was the last tackle. Ray Price, Mark Conway. Ooh, lovely long pass from Conway to Wilson. Faced by John Bentley, turns the ball back inside. Paul Dixon says thanks very much. And Vince Fawcett now sweats wings and Fawcett, a very strong runner. And when he straightened up, he met a posse of three Wakefield tacklers. David Heron. Kuwiti misses the pass. Carl Gibson doesn't. Gibson held by Mason. Still going Gibson, in fact. James Lulawai has to complete the tackle. Paul Worthy. Worthy through the first man. Then lays him behind John. Kuwiti was on the dummy run and Heron put the ball down. been enough drop passes in this game so far to make it very interesting although neither side will feel that that's what they're here to do James Lulawai Andy Fletcher Fletcher can't get away from Delaney and Fletcher gets a little bit of extra treatment there from the youngster and I think this is all going to end with a penalty for Wakefield and Delaney being spoken to by a combination of the touch judge and the referee. Coming up to the half-hour mark, just a point between the sides, a good local derby. And Conway fails to find touch, instead finds Phil Ford. That was a good catch from Ford. Conway first man up and Conway makes the tackle. This time Ford does play the ball correctly. Paul Dixon. Paul Worthy. Unloads in the tackle. Ball gone to ground. Maskell couldn't hold it. Tracy Lazenby says thanks very much. And Wakefield are back in possession. A little bit of an experience there, perhaps, from Worthy. But only to be expected when you're making your first team debut. John Thompson. Andy Kelly. Good work by Kelly. Up almost to the 25. Mark Conway. Conway still looking to get rid. And again, he would have been better advised to hang on. Kawiti for Leeds. David Heron. Heron steps inside. Turns the ball back again to Kawiti, to Delaney. Delaney was looking for his centre, but Gibson had overrun him. Vince Fawcett. It's a good tackle by John Glancy. Dixon and again a Leeds player juggling with the ball. This time Dixon holds on. Heron on the dummy run. Worthy gets the ball away and gets it away beautifully to Cavill Hugh. Schofield's in support, back to Hugh. That was a good pass from Schofield, but it's been rolled forward. But a very quick pair of hands there from the Great Britain International. Realised that he was going to be held. And Cavill Hugh was in support. He'd gone on the other side of Schofield after releasing the pass himself. But the move came to naught. Referee David Campbell right on the spot to penalise Leeds for the forward pass. Strum collapses. Leeds are blamed and Wakefield get the penalty. Conway. Tapped the ball to himself very quickly while one or two of the Leeds players were still standing around in the scrummaging position. Ray Price, the 1-2. Nigel Bell. Stopped by Cavill Hugh. James Lulawai. Gets the ball away to Price. This is a break from Price. He's got Mason inside him. Andy Mason can score. Can he go? Was he obstructed? Play on, says the referee. Now, whether that's to give Wakefield every chance. In fact, he hasn't given the obstruction. 
And Leeds will restart with a tap on their own 25. Well, that's a let-off for Leeds. So still the scoreline, Leeds 10, Wakefield Trinity 9. Delaney, Paul Dixon the runner. Paul Worthy. Good tackling by uh, Ray Price and by Tracy Lazenby. Kuwiti. Can't break his way free, Kuwiti. Clancy and Kelly make sure of that. Maskill. Maskill nabbed. Almost by the collar, perhaps more by the shoulder by Kelly. That's a long testing kick for Andy Wilson. And the ball eventually bounces right for him. He runs away from Bentley. And Andy Wilson really going there. And he was nabbed by Heron and Schofield. The crowd thought the tackle was high. Referee David Campbell felt it was perhaps around the shoulder. Good work from Wilson. Schofield again leading the Leeds tacklers on that far side of the field. Mark Conway fainted this way, fainted that. Still going Conway. He's found the gap. Mark Conway on the burst. Leeds coming across to cover Delaney. And Delaney nabs him. Good cover tackle that by the scrum half on the other on his opposite number. John Thompson. Turns the ball back to Nigel Bell and Bell hairs through the gap. Nigel Bell, can he get the pass away? Yes, he can. Ray Price. And Price nabbed by Phil Ford. But Trinity have gone to five yards. This is the last tackle. Andy Mason to John Thompson. Thompson, the little kick through. If the ball comes back to Kelly, Wakefield have got something and they've got a try. Andy Kelly. Five minutes before half time, Kelly's in for Wakefield's second try. Well, the move built up initially on this right side of the field. When Trinity switched direction, Nigel Bell went very close indeed. And when the little kick came in, it bounced very well indeed for Andy Kelly. And Kelly picked up and there was nobody really going to stop the big fella from three or four yards out. So Andy Kelly is in. And that's Kelly's sixth try of the season. And Wakefield Trinity are back in front. We're going out, we're going out. We're going out, 13 points to 10 the scoreline. They like it in the north stand. Plenty of applause as the Wakefield players make their way back into their own half of the field. Always a good time, of course, to put points on the board just before half time. I suppose any time's a good time, but just before half time is as good as anything. Conway then with the kick. Andy hits the post. He's been a little unhappy from this side of the field as Conway. He's uh, missed with one and hit the post with another. And so there's still just three points between the sides, 13 points to 10 the scoreline. Could well be that those two kicks from Conway could be important at the end of the day. Let's go for then to restart when the ball will settle for him on the centre spot. Andy Kelly straight back in position. Not quite sure what significance there is, but both Trinity's tries have come from forwards and both been scored from close in. And Leeds, of course, have a try from half back Delaney and from winger Bentley. John Glancy on the burst. Glancy getting very quickly into his stride. And the crowd thought that was a trip. The referee saw nothing amiss. Good testing kick from Conway. Phil Ford just about keeping that one in. Throws the dummy, steps inside his man, Ford. Can't get away from Phil Eden. And Ford's taking a knock. He's getting painfully to his feet to play the ball. And Leeds will be grateful to be back in possession on that far side. I think Wakefield may well have surprised them just a little by the pressure they've put them under in this half, although I think territorially it's been fairly even. Perhaps 60-40 in favour of Wakefield. But not much between the sides. Maskill to Dixon. 
Dixon, a willing worker, always prepared to take the ball up. Devotee this time with the kick. You see the effect of the wind there, it's holding that ball up, and Andy Fletcher makes a good catch. Fletcher runs across the field, and the two second row forwards were in close attendance there, Kawiti and Cavill Hugh, and Hugh it was who nabbed him, and Hugh held him down, so Wakefield had the penalty. Conway going to have a dip. Well, he's fully 50 yards out, Conway. But he obviously feels it's well worthwhile. Well, Mark Conway has kicked two out of four so far this afternoon. 50% record. Trying to make that 60% by making it three out of five. Again, these would be valuable points for Wakefield just before the break. He's got the distance, if he's got the direction, he's pulled it. Carl Gibson. Gibson running across the field and straight into problems there. Ray Price and Nigel Bell leading the tacklers. Paul Worthy. Dixon again, been involved in almost everything Leeds have done, certainly down the centre of the field this half. David Heron, and Heron looking for the gap, and Andy Mason spotted that Heron had turned inside, and that was a good tackle from Mason. Devoted to Cavill Hugh. Hugh steps away from Glancy's tackle and straight back into problems, as Price and Glancy throw him down to the ground. Phil Ford. Fraud's kick by sectoring Slater and Fletcher, and Fletcher takes responsibility for picking the ball up. <laughs> Nigel Bell. <laughs> well, the end of the first 40 minutes, and I think Wakefield will feel well pleased with their work. They scored tries from Thompson and Kelly, and they had a drop goal from Tracy Lazenby, and a goal and a penalty from Mark Conway. In reply, Leeds. Had a little purple patch, a five-minute spell, where Delaney scored a try and uh, then John Bentley, and in between, Maskill kicked a goal. At the half-time score, Wakefield Trinity 13, Leeds 10. Delaney puts the ball in, doesn't really go in. To Vasey, to Gary Lord, having a good run there, Gary Lord. Tackle just in time, by the way, for Trinity defence. Back to Delaney, Leeds now attacking fiercely, that's Dixon. And that's, is it over? And the Trinity defence just managed to push Delaney back. Has it back to his house half. Vasey. What have Lee's got to offer now? Heron. Great chance here. Out to Paul, Phil Ford. And Phil Ford goes in to score a brilliant try from a long pass by Gary Schofield. Super try. Conway back to Conway. And a high up and under. Gary Law's going to take this one safely. And he misses it, and Trinity has scored. Trinity has scored, and I think it's Eden who got that try. That's Nigel Bell. Nigel Bell, cunning, crafty player that he is. Strong, great play by Wakefield Trinity, make a good break there. Straight down the middle, fumble the ball. Who's going to get there? And Trinity score. Trinity score, marvellous try, straight between the posts. And after 30 minutes of the second half, Phil Fox, the ex-Leeds player, scores a marvellous try, executed all the way through the Leeds defence by a brilliant Wakefield Trinity attack to, to stick four points on the Wakefield Trinity score. Bell to to Zellai, Zellai fumbles the ball, Zellai puts the ball to Kelly, fumbles the ball. Eden picks the ball up, zooms across the field, gives it out to Mason. Mason breaking through, now he's got Seigrove on the inside of him. He got Seigrove there who goes through and scores a brilliant try for Wakefield Trinity to make the score. Wakefield Trinity 16, Leeds 8. And Wakefield going absolutely a mock this afternoon here at Headingley now. The game completely in their control. Trinity looking very, very dangerous again. Slick passing. And there goes Zellai. Zellai going for the line, he's going over and he's always scored. Zellai scored yet another try for Wakefield Trinity to further humiliate Leeds. Put it back to Delaney now. 
to Laney to Schofield. Schofield, and a marvellous Schofield try. It's got to be a try. Typical Schofield opportunity to try a little bit late in the game. It's not going to lead too much good. But it's a good try. Strangely enough, a, a sort of rather muted welcome from the Leeds side. They've not been all that much applause as they would have done if it had been a very important occasion. Right, just before we catch up on the second half here of this match, Wakefield Trinity versus Leeds, with a reminder of the score, 13-10 in favour of the home side. Let's hear from one man who would have loved to have been involved in the game, but of course he's been transferred to Sheffield Eagles a fortnight since, the former Leeds prop, Hugh Woodell. Hugh, tell us a little bit, first of all, about your time at, at Headingley. Well, um, it comes to an abrupt end. That's all I can say about my time at Headingley. Um, as far as my relationship with the spectators is concerned, I think it was rather good. But unfortunately, it's the spectators um, don't have a say in who picks a side, um, and they don't have a say in who stays at Edinley and who goes. It's a big concern. So obviously, you know, sometime or another, with all the signings they've had, they've got to make way for these new signings. And I think I'm one of the first, along with Chris Vasey, to bite the dust, as, as you might say. I can tell by the, the, the tone of your voice that you're very disappointed at having left Leeds. Yeah, I'm very disappointed at uh, leaving Leeds, but we've got to be realistic about it. Um, since I've been at Leeds, they've been playing me as substitute, taking me off after sort of like five minutes into the second half, etc., etc. And uh, now having gone to Sheffield, I'm looking forward, hopefully, touch wood, to playing 80 minutes and uh, doing my best for them. How do you think the rest of the season will go for Leeds? Because it must have been a, a bitter disappointment for them. First of all, to be knocked out in the preliminary round of the Challenge Cup and then to go down at home to Wigan in the Championship. Yeah, it's a disappointment and um, I've been, I have played uh, my part in um, uh, how Leeds have gone on so far and hopefully the lads will carry on and do well for the, the, the supporters at Leeds because I think the supporters at Leeds deserve a good side and uh, hopefully they'll have one. You know, I've, I've got no bones about the players or or um, the spectators there. It's just a decision that was made. Um, probably better for me to move on and, uh, well, uh, better for Leeds, uh, as they think. They've got some quality players, nevertheless, at Headingley. I mean, it must have been a joy for you, uh, packing down up front and knowing that when you won the ball and got it away, that people like Gary Schofield were working behind the pack. Yeah, Gary's a top-class player, there's no doubt in that. And, uh, you know, he, he, I think he's Leeds through and through now, um, since he's moved from Hull. And he's doing a good job for Leeds in, in both on the field and, uh, you know, with the, the junior supporters, etc., etc. And, um, you know, the likes of uh, Bob Ackerman, I, I hope, will add to the, the strength. Uh, I think Carl Gibson is a tremendous player, you know, he's very, very underrated. Um, internationally, I think he should be given a chance internationally, you know. As a player yourself, did you have a favourite player in the Leeds ranks? No, they're all, they're all sort of like top players, you know, you can't have any question about that. Um, as individuals, the, 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 they're all top players. You, you know, I can't uh, say any different. Um, as a team, sometimes we, Leeds might have lacked, but you know, uh, David Ward will get that right. So, you know, hopefully they'll do very, very well for them. Do you think they'll go well in the Premiership? Um, it depends who they draw. Um, obviously, I think they're going to finish runners-up. Have it, Wakefield. Um, uh, uh, what was it? St Helens having lost the other night to Warrington. And, um, you know, they'll have the, the home draw, so, you know, as long as they, they knuckle down and do the job in hand, I think they'll do quite well in the Premiership as well. Can we wish you the best of luck, Huey, in your new career with Sheffield Eagles, and thank you very much for your time. Cheers, thank you very much. So there we are, that's the ex-Leeds and Great Britain prop, Huey Waddell, now, of course, a Sheffield Eagles player. Once again, a reminder of the half-time score here at Bellevue, Wakefield Trinity 13, Leeds 10. And I would suggest it's still all to play for during this second half. 40 minutes to go. Good deep kick from Conway. Well collected by Fawcett and straight into his stride, Fawcett. And almost running through Ray Price, but Ray Price hanging on. Phil Ford to kick, this time with his left foot. And that's a tester for Richard Slater, the ball holding up. And the second bounce, the vital one. And not too many problems there for Slater. Ray Price. Looks to have recovered very well indeed from that injury at St Helens last week. Enjoying every moment of his time in English football.
Clark Conway, Andy Kelly. Good ball from Kelly to Phil Eden. Got the winger outside. Wilson, chance for him to run. Schofield's across, and Schofield nabs him. And gets a little bit of help from Bentley. Andy Kelly. Kelly trying to get the ball away, and the Leeds fans almost in unison there, greeting that pass that went in straight to Colin Maskill. Kuwiti, Ford into the line, Ford looking for the gap, and Mason nabs him. The ball already fed away on that far side. Gary Devote, and Devote held by John Glancy. Paul Dixon. And again, Glancy the tackler. Paul Worthy. Seen plenty of work during his first team debut in the first half. I think there'll be a bit more to come in the second. Schofield. Puts the ball high in the air. Mark Conway's moving across, doesn't make it. Cal Gibson does. And that was a great catch from Gibson. And that was the last tackle, but Gibson was also near. And the Wakefield Trinity tackling was just right then, and it needed to be. James Lulawai. Tracy Lazenby. Phil Eden. Andy Kelly coming onto the pass nicely, Kelly. Almost breaking through. It was a good tackle by Cavill Hugh. Conway. Conway ducking under the would-be tackler, who was Paul Dixon. Lazenby. He was just looking for half a yard there to perhaps get the kick in. And John Glancy got other ideas. He feels he can make progress, Glancy. And this is the last tackle. And the ball there, uh, bouncing very awkwardly for John Bentley. He did well to recover and get his pass into Delaney. Phil Ford not able to get away, but gets the ball away. This is a great run down the middle of the field by Bentley. He's still going. John Bentley's still going. And Bentley is away. And this will be one of the tries of the season as far as Leeds are concerned. What a marvellous effort from John Bentley. The Wakefield tacklers were left in shreds behind him. He just raced his way through. And we're barely four minutes into the second half, and what a try from John Bentley. Well, there didn't look to be too much on when Bentley slipped initially. He got the ball to Delaney, Delaney away to full-back Phil Ford, and when Bentley came back into the move, he ran fully 50, 60 yards, Bentley, eluding all the would-be Trinity tacklers, and when he finally touched down, the roar from the Leeds fans told its own story. A terrific try from uh, John Bentley. That will certainly, I would guess, be one of the highlights of his professional career so far. It's his second try of the match, and it certainly put the cat among the pigeons. Leads back in front by the odd point. Maskill. Knows his way well enough round the Bellevue ground. And he's pulled it just wide of this near upright, so still just a point between the sides. Wakefield Trinity 13, Leeds 14. Well, that really was a wonder try by John Bentley. He'll score a few better than that if he plays until he's an old man. Right through the centre once he straightened up. And then he set off on a curving run and was away round Richard Slater. Strength and speed took him past the fullback for a super touchdown. Well taken by Gibson. And Gibson still going, and that was a good tackle eventually by who else? Ray Price. What an example this man sets. Paul Dixon. So just as Wakefield scored early in the first half of the match, 
Leeds have made the first breakthrough early in the second half and that's a tester for Slater and he's equal to it. Good catch by the Normanton boy. Devotee up on him very quickly indeed. Aided by Kuwiti and Wakefield are back in their own 25. Andy Fletcher. The fanciest chances are running from here. John Thompson. I think Richard Slater's taken a knock. The physio coming on to the fullback. In the meantime, Kelly takes the ball and gets it away to Conway, and Conway accelerating beautifully through the middle, and he was grabbed just at the vital moment by David Heron, and the knock-on is given. That was a super little move by Mark Conway. Plenty of acceleration, and Heron just about grabbing the tail of his shirt as he went past. Leeds will have the put-in. And as I suspected, James Lulawai has indeed gone to standoff half to compensate for the absence of Paul Taylor. Plenty of advice for the touch judge and the referee about the position of the Wakefield line from the Leeds fans. David Heron. Devotee. Devotee gets the ball away, but it's knocked on before Gibson can drop on it. So this time when the scrum goes down, Trinity will have the head and the ball. Plenty of Derby flavour about this match. Ball out on the Wakefield side, Lulawai. Lulawai, a very solid handoff, disposed of Phil Ford in no uncertain terms. Phil Eden had uh, very few running chances in this match so far, the eight try man. That's a good ball from Lazen Bitter Mason. Mason was moving on to the pass, gets it away to Kelly. <laughs> Kelly again. Nigel Bell, good acceleration for a number 10 forward Bell, racing away from the Leeds cover tacklers. And scrum half Delaney had all on there to get back to help with the tackling with Carl Gibson. Conway. A testing kick because John Bentley was supporting, so he has to move back. Ford is beaten by the bounce, there's something on here. And Wakefield Trinity have a try, and no problems at all there for Tracy Lazenby. Once that ball eluded Phil Ford, Bentley was caught out of position. Ford was slow to get across, and Tracy Lazenby collected and leads find themselves once again conceding four points. Well, the kick came in from Mark Conway, and a good kick it was. It bisected the two Leeds players, and once Phil Ford slipped, the writing was on the wall. Tracy Lazenby was well up in support, and crossed for his side's third try of the afternoon, and his own fifth try of the season. So once again, the game swinging backwards and forwards. Trinity back in front now by 17 points to 14. And that's the fourth time in the game already that the lead has changed hands. And let's see if Conway can add two more points. Well, he struck it well as Conway, and it's hit the upright. You can't get much nearer than that without scoring the points. So Leeds, who must have thought they were right back in it after that try by John Bentley, have still got work to do. 17 points to 14. Well, coach David Ward, considering that Paul Worthy has done enough on his debut, to be replaced and Gary Lord comes on and just taking a look at the pack it could well be that Cavill Hugh will move up to number eight to allow Gary Lord to slot into the second row but we'll have to wait and see Gary Lord misses the first tackle he's asked to make but does enough to slow Andy Kelly down Phil Eden this time Lord makes the tackle but not without having a wrestling match with Eden first. Oh, 
Mark Conway. Maskil and Kuwiti Nabin. This is the last tackle. Trinity looking for the kicker and Kelly electing to take the duties. Phil Ford. Chance to run for Ford. Straight into Lazenby. Lazenby, a player who's always near the top of the Trinity tackle count. And did his job just right then. And Devotee puts the ball to ground. So not for the first time this afternoon, Leeds, having worked hard to get possession, surrender it almost immediately, that on the second tackle. Ray Price on the dummy run, Conway switches the ball back to Bell. And that was good work by Cavill Hugh there, not falling for that one. The referee says a knock-on. I think the Leeds fans felt that they ought to have been allowed to proceed. However, Mr Campbell is the man in charge. David Heron, Gary Schofield, Delaney. Oh, and Andy Wilson gets the interception. Has he got the pace to make it to the line, Wilson? He's running away from Bentley at the moment. Ford's across, Wilson's still going, and Wilson's in for the try. No, the foot's in touch. He's got a foot in touch on this near side. That won't be allowed. Well, that would have been a wonderful try for Andrew Wilson. He's a Leeds lad, Wilson. He would have loved to score one against a club that he's never played for. Well, that was a dramatic moment. And Phil Ford, racing across, did just enough to prevent Andy Wilson scoring a try. Could well be the turning point of this game, because had Leeds fallen further behind there, They'd have had to score at least twice to get themselves back into the game. Gary Lord, held under his own sticks. Wakefield playing with some real fire in their belly this afternoon. As I was saying, one of the players told me before the game that they needed no motivation for this encounter. And that's exactly how it's shown. Leeds this time, pinned back inside their own 25. Gary Schofield will kick. It's charged down. Lazenby. The ball running just right for Lazenby. Trinity looking for more points. Lulawai. Conway. Conway slips. Feeds the ball out. Fly half fashion. Andy Kelly. Gets it away to Bell. Bell looks for route one up the middle and Schofield grabs him round the shoulders and wrestles him to the ground on the 25. Ray Price. John Thompson. Thompson appended. Tracy Lazen with a little kick through. Will the ball run right for him? Well, not quite, so leads back in possession. But pinned very much back on their own line, Phil Ford. Ford playing his first full game since January the 17th when he appeared against Lee. Been a little bit out of sorts this season, the international winger. It seemed at one stage of the season that his place was more guaranteed in the Great Britain side than it was in the Leeds side. But nevertheless, it's nice to see him back in action. The kind of player who can bring the crowd to life with just one scintillating run. Cavalio, Q was almost through, and that was an excellent tackle by Ray Price. Very good tackle by Price, and Price is penalised for holding on. John Bentley looks for the boot on the outside of Andy Wilson, and Wilson just grabs him by the arm. Kuwiti. Can't quite break through the tackle, Kuwiti. Does get the pass in, Delaney. Delaney goes back in to where the majority of the bodies are. Cavill Hugh. Hugh looking to get the ball away and does, and Schofield held immediately in the tackle. Leeds now beginning to put a little bit of pressure on. Gary Lord into the line, Phil Ford is into it too, and Ford just can't get away from the tacklers. David Heron. 
Chancey ball, but Kuwaiti held on. This is the last tackle. Will we see an up and under? Well, Schofield's ready for it. In fact, he's going to hold on. And eventually, pays the penalty for indecision. And Andy Wilson snaps up the loose ball. 15 minutes of the second half gone. 17-14 to Wakefield. What a good game Nigel Bell's had. Ray Price. to Lazenby, Lazenby, and that's a good tackle by Carl Gibson. Gibson read the situation beautifully and held on. Devotee, Schofield, buried immediately by Glancy. Still on his feet, Schofield, but held upright. Bentley, Gary Lord, good utility. Can operate full-back in the second row in the three-quarters. That ball was fed away beautifully there by Cavill Hugh to Colin Maskill, and again the Trinity tacklers were equal to it. And David Heron. Heron looking, he's wriggling through Heron, he's got support. Delaney puts the ball to ground. Richard Slater does well and picks up the ball in the face of some pressure from Leeds. Wakefield back in possession, and Schofield was giving Slater a helping hand to his feet. It was not appreciated by John Thompson. Because Slater, in fact, has taken a knock. That was a good break from uh, David Heron. And when he did finally get the pass away, uh, Paul Delaney had Wakefield tacklers all around him. And was always going to find it difficult to hold on to the pass. Slater, who received treatment a little earlier. This looks a slightly longer session of treatment. And Trinity would have to do a considerable reshuffle if he were to go off. Got Keith Rain, of course, on the bench, a former Leeds man. Nice little dummy from John Thompson. Andy Kelly. Had a storming game this afternoon. John Glancy, another who's looking to be back to his best. Good work from Cavill Hugh. Conway to Price. Price straight into Schofield and Dixon. This is the last tackle. And the leads are back in possession. Kuwaiti. It would put them back in front. David Heron. Carl Gibson. And Gibson tackled immediately. He took the ball by Andy Mason. Good work by Mason. And Heron still going. Looking for route one down the middle. Adapted remarkably well to stand off half for a player who's played the majority of his career at loose forward. Here's Paul Dixon. Good work by Nigel Bell. Devoted to Kuwaiti. Leeds got an overlap on the far side. If they can get the ball out, Gibson juggles, turns it inside, force it. The first way run force it's had. Tried to bring Ford onto the pass, and Wakefield are back in possession. And again at the vital moment, Leeds putting the ball to ground. Must be a great source of annoyance to both the players, the fans, and indeed coach David Ward. And they've pinched it back. Carl Gibson. Gibson, a very deceptive runner, he was very quickly into his stride there, and he's held up just a yard short. And Leeds are in as the ball grounded. The referee's taking a long, hard look, and he's awarded the try, and Cavill Hughes got it. And I think that Wakefield are feeling perhaps that Cavill Hughes didn't ground the ball, but the try is awarded. Took an awful long time for the referee to award the try. And that try has come exactly on the hour, and it's put Leeds back in front yet again, so for the fifth time in the game, the, Leeds change, the lead changes hands.
18 points to 17 is the Leeds lead at the moment. And Maskell has added two more points. So for the first time in the match, Leeds have got a little bit of daylight between themselves and Trinity. But it's only three points. So in the background, the public address telling you what's been happening. Keith Rain has now come on the field, replacing John Thompson. And Leeds coach David Ward has introduced the former Welsh Rugby Union and British Lion, Rob Ackerman, for Phil Ford. So a Welshman for a Welshman for Leeds. And Keith Rain straight into the action there for Wakefield. Paul Dixon. And again, Rain in the action. Doesn't make the tackle this time. Nigel Bell does instead. Gary Schofield, the long, deep kick. Sends Andy Fletcher racing back, and the bounce is a nasty one for the Wakefield winger. But that little bit of experience comes in there. And, just and hangs on in the tackle as well. Slater from acting half-back makes a little bit of progress too. A good ten yards by Richard Slater. John Glancy. Mark Conway. Tracy Lazenby. Lazenby trying to wriggle his way through. And he's lost the ball. David Heron stealing the ball away from him. So Leeds are back in possession. A very good attacking position too, if they can get things opened up from here. And Delaney electing to hold on. Cavill Hugh. Referee took a long hard look before he awarded Hugh's try. David Heron, Kuwiti, Leeds have got a spare man, they get the ball to Gibson, Gibson on the burst down the far side, throws a loose pass inside, Gibson, Leeds might still benefit, the ball is still loose and Leeds has scored a try. And that's been awarded. So, Leeds get themselves another try. So in three minutes, almost the same procedure that happened in the first half, with Leeds scoring twice in a very short space of time. And now there's a little bit more daylight between the teams. Leeds fourth try of the afternoon. Unlike the one immediately preceding it, it's gone to another Leeds forward, this time it's Paul Dixon. He's had a very good busy game indeed, has uh, Paul Dixon. Always been ready to take the ball up. Leeds were certainly favoured by the bounce there when the ball was flung inside by Gibson. And it looked for a while as though one, one man, at least from Wakefield Trinity, had the opportunity to get the ball away. But Dixon was first to the ball, first to the touchdown. And Leeds have extended their lead. Colin Maskill. And that's a good kick from Maskill. And it's now 26 points to 17. And Wakefield, if they're going to do anything about this, I've got about 15 minutes left to redress the balance. Kawiti collects, feeds Fawcett, and Fawcett bursting his way through. They're just bouncing off Fawcett, Conway's across. And that's a great tackle from Mark Conway, but had Fawcett had support inside, Leeds wouldn't have been counting some more points. And Fawcett plays the ball to himself and goes again. He's got the pace of a winger Fawcett, but he's built like a second row forward. Schofield, Delaney, to Heron, to Gary Lord, and the ball's gone to ground. James Lulawai. To Glancy. Wakefield back in possession. Glancy up to the halfway line. Nigel Bell adapting half back.
Keith Ryan. James Lulawai. Straightens up Lulawai. Couldn't find a route up the middle. This is the last tackle. Blazing bit of kick. It's a high testing up and under. Gary Lord didn't quite make it, but Paul Delaney did. Paul Dixon coming on to the pass. Leeds still inside their own 25. Cavill Hugh, the Australians had a good strong game for Leeds in the second row. David Heron, running in familiar style, Heron. The elbows pumping away as he runs. Schofield will kick. It's a test for Andy Wilson and also for Richard Slater. The ball sits up just nicely for the fullback. Slater away from Devorty, but not from Schofield. The ball's low, Slater back in possession. Carl Gibson drops on it. I should imagine there's one or two cold fingertips out there this afternoon that may well be accounting for this loose ball. David Heron, Heron's away, got support inside. Gary Schofield, and Schofield accelerates to the line. That's a great try from Schofield, under the sticks. Gary Schofield is never too far away as the supporting player when any there's, whenever there's anything to be had. And as we saw there, he got his full reward. So Schofield set the move going with his kick to the right side. Slater collected, then he lost the ball. And when Leeds changed direction, David Heron made the break. And when he slipped the pass away, there was Gary Schofield to race under the sticks. And score a try. Leeds beginning to put the pressure now on Wakefield. They've grabbed uh, three tries in the last seven minutes. Maskell's goal, two of them. And this is the easiest kick he'll have of the three. This will take him on to 94 for the season. It's exactly what it does. And he's now just one behind uh, Mark Conway. Thirty-two points to seventeen. It was very, very close for the first hour of this game until Cavill Hugh put uh, Leeds in front with that try, and they've never really looked back since. Maskill has goaled that one. He also goaled Dixon's try when there was a moment of hesitancy in the Wakefield defence, and also makes Schofield's try worth six points. Suddenly, Leeds bounce back with an eighteen-point burst without reply. Gary Lord, well held by John Glancy. Kuwiti jumping into the tackle, Kuwiti. Again, Schofield will kick, and again Slater's across, takes it on the first bounce. Rob Ackerman, first man to nail him. Andy Wilson, still going Wilson, it's a good tackle, Andy Mason, obstruction given, the scissors crossing movement indicated by the referee, very rare for that to happen, to be awarded against a side that hasn't got possession, Nevertheless, Wakefield have the penalty. Has Lazenby found touch? No, he hasn't. He's found the safe arm, arms of John Bentley. Bentley away from the first tackler, who's low away, and Bentley still going. And Bentley still on the run on the far side of the field. Feeds the ball out to Gibson. 
Gibson gets it back inside and the ball's gone to ground and I'm afraid that's not going to be allowed by Vince Fawcett but another sparkling run from John Bentley. And you can hear the applause from the lead section of the crowd who are seated or standing in fact very near to us here at the commentary position. And they certainly enjoyed that run from Bentley and that'll give him a lot of confidence to go with the try that he scored in this second half. And confidence such a vital factor of course in any sportsman's makeup. The scrum has wheeled and that ball could well come out on the lead side. I think the referee will send them down again. He does indeed. And just looking for his signal. In fact, the signal is in fact. What is it? I was looking for the signal. He's having a word with Colin Maskill. And he's given Wakefield a penalty. I thought that was the original signal. So the differential penalty to Wakefield. And Conway pops it safely into touch on that far side of the field. Ten minutes to go. Well, Richard Slater has had to receive attention a couple of times in the match, and now he's had to leave the field. So John Thompson back into the action, and Andy Mason moves to full back. James Lulawai. John Glancy. Mark Conway, well, he thought about the long pass. There would have been an interception on, and Phil Eden did well to land that one. Andy Wilson puts the ball to ground. Schofield, well, he would have been allowed to play on Schofield had he been able to collect that bouncing ball there. It was a little unfortunate as he went for it. It ran away from him. And uh, just to rub a little bit of salt in the wound, when the scrum goes down, it'll be Wakefield's head and ball. Leads now down to 12 men, Paul Dixon being sin-binned for an offence that occurred around the scrum on the far side of the field. Schofield. Gets the ball away to Ackerman, Ackerman on to Gary Lord. Gary Lord pushes off his man, Carl Gibson. That was a forward pass. So Leeds going to finish this game with 12 men. Andy Fletcher not really had the chance of a run since he came on fairly early in the first half to replace Paul Taylor. Mark Conway, Kelly again, just been named Workfield Trinity's man of the match. Deserved it too, he's had a very, very good game in the second row, Kelly. Johnny Thompson. Five minutes to go. Game looking as though it might well be beyond Wakefield Trinity at this stage, but you can never tell. 15 points between the teams. Mark Conway. Steps inside two would-be tacklers. Nice work by Conway. And that was a good tackle coming in from Gary Devorty. Lazenby to Bentley. And the crowd urging Bentley to have a run instead. Throws the long pass to Gary Lord. Delaney has to reach a little for that one, but holds on. Fawcett. Fawcett got the strength and ability and the pace to become one of the most exciting wingers in the game. Held this time on the halfway line. Gary Lord. Good tackle by Bell, right round the ankles. David Heron to Ackerman, Ackerman reaching for the pass and that's good work by Phil Eden. Ackerman would have been clear. Delaney throws the long ball across the line. Leeds keeping the ball moving. Schofield will kick. Oh, and that's a real tester and a real bad bounce for Andy Fletcher. An excellent kick from Gary Schofield. Takes play once again inside the Wakefield 25. 
32 points to 17 the margin, so Leeds on their way to avenging that defeat at Headingley by Wakefield on the opening day of the league season. Of course, valuable points for Leeds, with uh, Wigan losing at home yesterday to Widnes, as you saw in our half-time highlights. Ball out on the Wakefield side. James Lullaby, Andy Mason. Got the pace, Mason, but can't find the gap because grabbed by an equally speedy man in Carl Gibson. Gibson playing his umpteenth consecutive game for Leeds. Very, very consistent Carl Gibson and a Wakefield man injured. Referee orders they stop the clock while John Bentley has a word with the crowd. Bentley receiving a little bit of humorous advice from the lead section of the crowd. He, of course, the sinner at Warrington, or certainly a judge to be, when he kicked the ball out on the full a couple of weeks ago, which in truth only conceded a scrum. But Warrington, of course, went on to score the what turned out to be the winning try from that scrum situation. Phil Eden back on his feet. Keith Wren. Nigel Bell, nabbed by Cavill Hugh. Mark Conway, fainted twice and then threw a loose pass and Gibson's onto this one, and Gibson will score. In fact, the referee says no, the ball was knocked forward. Well, I'm afraid I was guilty there of watching the ball. Referee Campbell pulled them all the way back. And he, of course, the man who has the last word. James Lulloy doing well to hold on there in the face of some very stiff opposition. Kelly the one-handed pass, Lazenby. There's something on here if Trinity can feed the ball out. Andy Wilson steps around Bentley. Wilson still going, looking for support, finds it. Andy Mason. Mason eventually nabbed by Heron. That was a nice move by Wakefield, coming from ten yards out on the other side of the field, almost up to the halfway line. Andy Kelly. Away from Kuwaiti. Not away from Ackerman. Kelly almost up to the halfway line again. Conway. And Devotee not buying the dummy. And this is the last tackle. <laughs> Lesenby's kick sitting up very nicely for Fawcett. And Fawcett on the gallop down the far side. And he's away as Fawcett. And Fawcett running down the line. This will be a spectacular effort. And that's good tackling by Wakefield Trinity. James Lulawai was across there in a flash. Excellent work from both sides. That's the kind of play that the crowd come to see, and that's an interception. In fact, Conway doesn't hold on. Gary Lord, David Huron, Rob Ackerman. Got Bentley outside him. Bentley now, will his strength and pace get him through here? Oh, and it does. Oh, he scythed in at the corner, Bentley. And the try awarded. And that's a hat-trick for John Bentley. Well, once Bentley got into stride there, it looked as though the Wakefield players were absolutely standing still. 36 points to 17, the dying moments of the game, Mark Conway protests. And what a great try that was from John Bentley. He thanks the crowd for their support. And once Rob Ackerman managed to get the ball away to Bentley, I don't think there was too much doubt that he was going to score, because although there were Trinity men between him and exactly where he wanted to be, Bentley just got into his stride, and his pace and his strength took him over, and Leeds got themselves another four points. Try coming in the dying moments of the game. There can't be too much time left. A welcome hat trick for John Bentley. He's had a slightly in and out career since he turned professional, but learning the game all the time. And when he can run and get touchdowns like that, he's certainly got a big future. Colin Maskill. Kick four already. 
really developed since Leeds gave him the kicking role this season. And just as I say that, he lets me down. But it's not going to alter the result, because Leeds now established a very firm lead indeed. 19 points clear of Wakefield. Slight delay while the ball is fed back to Mark Conway. David Heron, a good catch. Ray Price misses him but stops him. Knocks him off balance. So that's another league victory for Leeds in their quest for this first division championship. And it's a very important one too, coming as it does in the wake of Wigan's home defeat by Widnes. And although Wakefield Trinity, who will be very disappointed with losing this one, led at half-time just as they did last week at St Helens, it was really a three-try burst in the space of seven minutes that sunk them in the second half. John Bentley scored a wonder try for Leeds, one of a hat-trick for him, but uh, disappointment, for, as I say, for Wakefield Trinity because although they made a great start to the game with that try from John Thompson inside three minutes and they had another from Kelly just before the break, I'm afraid that losing pay is all the lads are going to draw today. So a good attendance, a good derby game and the final score, Wakefield Trinity 17, Leeds 36.